Hi, I'm sitting here in Sacramento, California with Kyle Rowland, great harp player, you, also a guitar player. Um, watch for him. And if you're uh, up in Northern California where he plays often, definitely check him out. You're going to love his just... <laughs> You're going to love his incredible harmonica attack and exciting showmanship Thank you, for man. sure. I appreciate so that. we're going to play Have My Fun by Little Walter, the uh, the shuffle version. And uh, and uh, he's been studying up on it. So uh, we're ready to go. I'm going to play the box Jimmy Lee Robinson part with the uh, tremolo on. I think I need to slow that speed down. Let's see now. Yeah. Okay, let's try this. A one, two, three, four. that works <laughs> all right <laughs> you want to do yeah, it again so um, no. let's talk a bit about what robert lockwood is doing um we're going to come back to jim lee robinson another day and talk about his great bass lines on so many important records by uh little walter eddie taylor and his own records but uh, right now i want to talk about the ingredients that that lockwood is using as his counterpoint to uh, the harp, the harp and the guitar, this kind of like give and take yin yang thing. But there's just not tons of ingredients, just a few. So the main thing is the ninth chord, the first 12 bars, he's doing your ninth chords and the what I call sliding ninths or sliding six nines, right? You take the third finger on the G, B, and E string, seventh fret, that's the top part of your ninth chord, right? And you slide it up two frets. And then the equivalent of that for the four is this is your A ninth, the same chord that's in Stormy Monday, which is fourth A string with your first finger, fifth D string with your third finger, fourth G string with your uh, second finger, and then your pinky's on the fifth fret of the B string. Now just leave off the first finger that I told you about. This is the chord. You don't have to play it, just think it. You take that V shape in the middle, D, G, and B, and slide it up and back two frets. 
just slide it this way. And then, and then, and these are just perfect for, for harp because it colors in what they're doing. You know, you couldn't go ba 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 da da da. You know, you can't just play like real typical lead over that because it's it's not the right piece of the pie. It's the the little chords are are what they're like oxygen to a harmonica. So now that's the A sliding. This is the part of the ninth chord. Slide up. This makes it a six because the pinky on the B string on the seventh fret, that's a six. Has that refreshing sound to it. Like if you did this. The F sharp over the A makes it a six. And then back to, I like to use my thumb there. And then you have a choice. You could go B like this, seven, six, seven move it up two frets and back or you can do it down here second fret to fourth fret this is awkward to do this but you could do it at, if you wanted to keep that same shape but it sounds better to do it here I think and then that's his turnaround lick and he does some version of that throughout the whole song so you got to really uh, this is where you let them have it third fret e string i'm going to use all down strokes and i'm going to do something special i'm going to use one stroke for two strings see if you can do that it's all downs so what i'm doing is i'm bumping on the third fret b string open And then that's sort of pentatonic stuff, the P word, right? The half step in, second fret, G string. That's so, so. Now I'll try it this way, second and fourth, and then to the other position of your ninth chord. Oh, then you have. Well, I have my fun if I. And now, now we're gonna go up to this hideaway chord, right? We've talked about this before. And there's a little trick to this, which is you got to do some special work with this. You gotta. Um, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the way I think about the hideaway chord is you take an E ninth up here which is 11, 12, 11, 12. We're getting into the second ver the uh, second go around now here. And then, when, then, then take your first finger, put it away from the A string all the way to the ninth fret of the B string. Now you have this. And then your pinky goes on the high E string. Whoa. That's the hideaway chord. Now, see if you, you're going to have to do something special with your first finger. You're going to have to grab the ninth fret on the B and E strings together and go. And then you just take the first finger, the pinky off and on. Huh? Then you play the top part of the A ninth chord up here. You might even hear this. I did a third finger, sub, third fret substitution there. It works. He does that. So he'll play a, I'm getting on the five, four, one now. So five, you can play as ninth. And then he does these bass runs over the four. And then his licks for the turnaround. Or, and and your 
ninth chord. Make it sense? So let's try the whole 12 bars real slow. That's the hideaway chord. Doing the little extra work, covering two strings with your first finger. And then I forgot to tell you the big one, right? He does that over and over in this song. This is just like Sweet Home Chicago. 12 and 10. Now we're on the one before we go to the five. That's 12 and 10 on the B and E strings. 10 and nine on the B and E strings. Nine and seven on the B and E strings. This is a chord, right? top of your E chord. This e, A bar chord moved all the way up. And then down two frets from that, seventh and fifth fret, five and four, down one, down one more. This is part of a ninth chord. It's this part of the ninth chord. It's part of this beautiful chord, which is two, one, three, two. That's the chord in Tanya. Anyway, so whole deal, okay? And then the thing is, you don't go... That doesn't sound as cool as this. Ah! So take a look at my right hand. I'm going open E string is in the middle of every time you pick it up and put it back. If you can do that, you can get this. Three. I'm going down, up, down. Down, up, down, down, up, down. B ninth, and that's those good bass runs on the four chord. He kind of fades out a little bit there, but he does something like this, which is just the music in the chord of your E chord. Yeah, so that's about the size of it. And then there's this E6. I'm bumping into the A string. And then your four is like this. So that's two, one, two. I almost forgot that. He, he, he's a little answer. It's kind of funny. The lyrics are so sad and he's kind of happy, isn't he? So it's. 9th fret G string, 12th fret E string, and bounce it. Do, ba, ba, boom, boo, boo. Or you could do 12th fret D string. This is the same 12th fret. Well, 14th fret D string. Same difference. Ah, okay. Trying to do two things at once. So that's pretty much what happens. This is the E6. You pick up your first finger and then you're on a typical A7. So all the chords are E in the whole song. E6, A7. This is a 6-9 or whatever, the hideaway chord, and the top part of this ninth. You can work your pinky up there in the 14th. I just heard that once. It's real pretty what he did. And then this. And then these licks. Try to go all down strokes. Use one stroke to get two strings. See if you can do that. One stroke, two notes. B string and E string. And then you could go. And then your ninth chord here and the sliding nights.
and that's the whole song. So hope you guys enjoyed this little look. You know, I always thought it was Luther Tucker, but you know, he was definitely a big student of Lockwood's, as we all know, and uh, as you can hear. And, uh, you know, it's credited in the Stephen Wurz discography as Lockwood and Jimmy Lee Robinson. Have fun with this. Let me know if it helped you out. Hope to see you on the road. Thanks for watching and see you next time.